Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today we're looking at the MSI Z97 Gaming 5 motherboard featuring the new Z97 chipset. The Z97 Gaming 5 motherboard comes in at a pretty attractive price point and today we'll take a look at what this board has to offer. Before I move on, I'd like to thank MSI for providing me this product and therefore making this review possible. In the box is the user's manual, the quick installation guide, a brochure with more MSI products, then there's the driver CD and then some SATA cable labels. MSI now includes a very beautiful black IO shield with soft padding on the inside for the board. Unfortunately MSI only includes two SATA 6 gigabit per second cables. I wish they'd include two more. Then there's an SLI bridge, the M connectors for the front panel and what's really special here is the audio boost Molex cable. By connecting this cable you will boost your audio even further. The use of this cable is optional though. MSI also includes a door hanger and a nice big case badge. Last but not least, the motherboard itself. First of all I have to say, the MSI Z97 Gaming 5 motherboard looks really really nice in person, much better than on a photo. The board's layout seems to be done very well on first sight and the red and black color theme really looks fantastic. This board for its price class is very heavy and that's good because high quality heatsinks are used. Now let's take a closer look at the board. The new Intel Z97 chipset is used here and it's being cooled down by this large heatsink here. Up here are two more heatsinks that cool down the VRMs. The Gaming 5 board makes use of an 8-phase power design which should be pretty good for overclocking, especially because the newer Intel CPUs now have built-in VRMs. Speaking of Intel CPUs, this is the LJ1150 socket. This socket supports the Haswell, Haswell Refresh, slash Devil's Canyon CPUs and should apparently also support the 5th generation of Intel's processors coming next year. As for memory, there are 4 DDR3 DIMMs that support 32GB at max and frequencies as low as 1066MHz and as high as amazing 3300MHz at OC. Now let's get to the storage connections. Right here are 6 SATA 6 gigabit per second ports that run off the Intel Z97 chipset. And just above the first PCIe X16 slot is the M.2 port that supports SATA 6 gigabit per second modules as well as M.2 PCIe modules with up to 10 gigabits per second. As for expansion slots, there are 3 PCIe 3.0 X16 slots and 4 PCIe 2.0 X1 slots. This board supports up to 3-way crossfire and up to 2-way SLI configurations. When running a single GPU configuration, use the first slot to run at X16. To run a two-way config, use the first and second slot to run at X8 and X8. When in three-way operation, the PCIe slots will run at X8, X4 and X4 modes. Now let's see how many fan headers are on this motherboard. Here's the CPU fan header, then there's a second CPU fan header, there's the system fan 1 header, the system fan 2 header, and last but not least, the system fan 3 header. So altogether 5 fan headers, that's not bad. But now let's take a look at the rest of the headers all across the board. Here are two USB 2.0 headers, front panel headers, the TPM module header, and the COM header or also known as serial port header. This is the direct audio power header. That's where you plug in the audio boost cable to boost your audio quality. Here's the front panel HD audio header. Right there, beside the SATA ports is an USB 3.0 header. On the very bottom of the board is a debugging LED that displays errors during the post process. After the post process, the CPU temperature is displayed. For audio, MSI uses the excellent Realtek ALC 1150 7.1 channel audio codec with high quality audio capacitors and as you can see, the audio components are completely isolated from the rest of the board to avoid interference. There also is a small switch here. By enabling it, you turn on the audio boost feature and allow power to come in through the audio boost Molex cable. This will improve audio quality and will also help with isolating the electrical side of the audio circuit. To power everything up, here's the 24-pin power connection and the 8-pin ATX 12-volt power connection. 
Right beside the 24 pin connection are some voltage checkpoints. Now let's move on to the back panel. Here's a PS2 combo port, two USB 2.0 gaming device ports, two regular USB 2.0 ports, one VGA output, one DVI output, one gigabit LAN port that's powered by the killer E2205 LAN controller, two USB 3.0 ports, two more USB 3.0 ports, one HDMI output and the gold-plated 7.1 audio jacks. The MSI Z97 Gaming 5 is a fantastic motherboard for its price. High quality components are used all across the board and there are lots of features. Of course this is no enthusiast grade motherboard, but it's a great choice for the gamer. Overclocking my Intel i7 4770K was no problem at all with this motherboard. The audio quality is fantastic I have to say. For most gamers and music listeners, there's no need to buy a dedicated sound card anymore. For an onboard solution it's amazing and can compete with sound cards. The system was very stable, no problems at all. I just wish there'd be two more SATA 6 gigabit per second ports, but of course it's understandable there are only six because of the M.2 slot. Other than that it's a fantastic port, which by the way in addition also is aesthetically pleasing. The price performance ratio is very very good. I can definitely recommend the MSI Z97 Gaming 5 motherboard. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit nicholas11x12techx.com to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.